All right, today we are going to be actually moving on to the next unit. All of this vector talk has really been an anticipation for what we're going to talk about now. Our next unit will be all about projectiles. Projectiles, I think, are awesome. This is one of my favorite units to teach just because there's there's a lot you can do with projectile motion, and there's a lot of like secret physics within uh, an object moving through the air. So let's first define what a projectile is. A projectile is an object that's moving through the air And the only force that's affecting this object is gravity. Making any free body diagrams that we draw for projectiles really super easy. So if I were to draw a free body diagram for a projectile, this would be my object. This would be my force. Weight of gravity pulling it down, which is pretty awesome. Right? It makes it really super easy. But there is something that I want to, to differentiate before we go any further. Um, we're going to be talking a lot about projectiles, and we're going to be talking a lot about free-falling objects. Those, if we were to draw a Venn diagram, we would say that this larger circle is projectiles, and that inside of this circle there is this uh, free-falling object. So yes, free-falling objects are projectiles, but not all projectiles are free-falling objects. The difference between a projectile and a free-falling object is that a projectile um, has some horizontal component to that. And I want you to remember that word, component. So a uh, projectile has some horizontal component. Let's say we had a big old cannon. And this cannon is situated on a cliff, and it's actually going to fire perfectly horizontally so that we've got some, some easier math to do. So here's my cannon, and it's going to fire uh, directly over this cliff. Once the cannonball leaves the cannon, it becomes a projectile. When it's still in the cannon, there's all those explosive gases from when the uh, cannon was ignited. There are all those explosive gases putting a force outward on the cannonball. But once it actually leaves that cannon, right here, once it actually leaves that cannon, this is now a projectile. And it moves in a very specific way. All projectiles, because the only force acting on them is gravity, end up moving in a parabolic arc until they hit the ground or, or hit something. So here we've got a projectile moving through the air. It's dropping, it's dropping, it's dropping. And in fact, it's increasing its speed downward. Because we have this unbalanced force, gravity, we also have some acceleration downward. And the acceleration downward is always going to be the same for every object on Earth. And we talked about why that is when we talked about Newton's three laws. Gravity for every object, the acceleration due to gravity for every object on Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Meaning that it increases its speed downward by 9.8 meters per second every second. Sorry, there are people working outside. That's what that noise was. Um, that means that here, we're mostly going in the horizontal direction because that's where all of the force was inside of the cannon, outward. But once we leave that cannon, gravity starts to take effect. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gravity starts to take effect and starts to pull that object downward at a rate at 9.8 meters per second squared, meaning at first, it's only pulling it down uh, very slowly. But then as time goes on, this gravity keeps pulling and this acceleration keeps happening and we're going downward, 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 faster and faster and faster. This is called a parabolic arc. 
And that's the video for today.